All right. And we are live. Welcome, everyone. Let me just check some settings really fast. Da, 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 da. Sound looks good. Audio looks good. All right. <clears throat> looks like we are ready. Happy weekend, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'd like to give it just a few more seconds, allow people to come on in. If you are, uh, if you've been here before, you know this typically goes. But just a second longer, and we'll dive in. But welcome, you guys. Hello, Goxie. Hello, Anna. Michelle. Hope everyone's having a good morning or afternoon, evening. <laughs> Hello. Best way to spend a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Yeah, I absolutely love this. I love coming to hang out with you guys. <laughs> it is always a good time. Hello, hello. Oh. Everybody can hear me okay, right? We should be good. Hi, Missy from Paris. Thank you for your helpful content. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you and welcome. <laughs> and good evening to you. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Happy Sunday indeed. I hope you guys are having a amazing Sunday. I hope it's extra lazy for you. Let's go ahead and get started. Looks like we're good. I think the sound is good. It says on my end. And as always, if, if there's any buffering or noise or sound issues, uh, just go ahead and let me know. But regardless, let's just go ahead and jump on in. <laughs> Again, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for joining for another round of Sunday Q&As where we hang out, we talk about the law, we talk about conscious manifestation, and I get a chance to answer your questions so that you can hopefully always, as always, have better insight and clarity to implement these teachings in your own life. Uh, just a couple quick things to announce. Oh, thank you guys for the super chats. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna to get to those in just one moment, just really quickly. Um, I just wanna give a heads up that we are going to begin to onboard people for the uh, Mindset Mastery Program that begins not tomorrow, but the following Monday is the first official day. And that is our uh, coaching, that is my 12 week coaching program. It is a wonderful program. I've gotten a lot of amazing feedback, great connections. If you did not get a chance to uh, sign up with me to work one-on-one -on -one with the last waitlist opening, this is a chance now to do so. And it's a fantastic group. It's a small knit group where we hang out again, talk about the law, and I'm here to help with any of your questions and give you all of my support. If you want more information, you can check it out down below on how to sign up and how to join the uh, registration, which is going on. Again, we're going to start onboarding this week. So if you have signed up, Expect an email this week, keep an eye on your inbox and be sure to keep an eye on all of your folders in case they wind up in spam or anywhere else. But it's gonna be a good time. Hope to see you guys there. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. Thank you guys so much again. Francesca, thank you for the super chat. I love this. Hi, Missy, how can I manifest a bigger chest? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, first know what you want. Know what you want. Get an idea in your mind of what you want to look like. If you have, desire any kind of physical change, any kind of uh, change to your appearance, try to get as clear of an idea of what you want that to be and how you want that to look. And whatever you could do to imply that you are now living that reality, right? So for example, if you wanted to, you know, manifest being a few cup sizes bigger in your chest, you would imagine 
perhaps you're standing in front of a mirror and seeing yourself as you would want to look, perhaps notice getting compliments, whatever that looks like for you, right? But we just want to imagine something that implies that the changes that we want to see, the physical changes in our body has sort of taken place. Like we've sort of stepped into that reality, so to speak. So whether that be visualization or inner conversations, imagining yourself having a conversation with someone, again, whatever resonates best with you. But um, I, I know it can feel a little tricky when it comes to physical appearance because we have this constant reminder called mirrors in our 3D. Um, so whatever, you know, whatever you would need to do to consistently go back there, consistently have that idea, have that scene, have that go-to so that if you do find yourself in the day-to-day -day noticing that old story, that old reality, like perhaps you're feeling self-conscious, bring that scene back up in imagination. Continue to go back there. Remember, it's always about what is being implied. So implying that you've already, you now already look the way that you desire to look and you feel the way that you desire to feel. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. You can also check out the video that I did make about manifesting health, which also goes hand in hand with manifesting uh, physical changes, um, changes to our appearance. So perhaps if you haven't seen that video, I would definitely check that out. Thank you so much. V for Tete? V for Tete. <laughs> Thank you so much for that super chat. What do I imagine slash affirm if I want to manifest my SP to stop going out like bars, etc.? and to remove a friend group from his life. They are toxic. Also, how do I make him want slash spend more time alone with me and chase me, spoil and compliment? What would I imagine or affirm? By the way, I love your videos. You look amazing. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. You are too kind. So how do we, how do we make a change in someone's behavior, right? How do we manifest an appearance to how somebody is showing up for us, right? A different appearance, like how somebody is showing up for us. Um, well, lucky for you, I do have a video coming out tomorrow on recreation of your specific person, because this is something that often becomes a sticking point. Um, because of the history that we have with our person, uh, if there is a history, right? Uh, if we've had previous interactions that were not ideal, that were not that great. Um, it can be really, really easy for us to be sort of stuck in that idea of them, right? We, it, it, it forms a new assumption about them. Our perception of them changes um, with how they show up. When it comes to recreation, I mean, first and foremost, definitely check out that video I have coming out tomorrow. I go, <clears throat> more in depth about the things that I did specifically when I was manifesting my person and how I manifested changes in his behavior. Um, but I mean, number one, first, getting very, very clear on what those things are, like not just what they are that you want to see change, but things that would imply that they are done, right? So for example, um, imagine a conversation where he's telling you that he no longer has the desire to go out and hang out with his friend group, right? Imagine the two of you talking and hearing the confirmation from him that, you know, he doesn't really want to run with these people anymore, that he doesn't think that they're a good influence on him. Whatever that may be, I mean, you could tweak it to your liking and what resonates for you. But, I mean, the, the important thing is imagining... And, and experiencing that state where he's essentially confirming that the change has taken place, right? Um, same thing it goes with the chasing, the spoiling, the complimenting, and, and you can even do this in sort of a montage way. Um, but I would be imagining a scene, I would be imagining, again, maybe a conversation where he is showing up in those ways, right? See him in the mind's eye as showing up bringing you gifts or showering you with attention, with love. Again, it's whatever that looks like 
for you and whatever resonates for you. You can even imagine a conversation with a friend talking about the change in his behavior and how he's been showing up differently, how he's made these amazing changes. And, and you know, these are just some ideas. You can play with them and shape them and, and mold them for what works best. But definitely check out the video I have coming out tomorrow. And for anyone else who's dealing with an SP situation where perhaps they're not showing up in the way that you want to see them and you want to see the a change in their behaviors or their mannerisms or you know how they're ap uh, appearing in 3D, keep an eye out for that video. <laughs> Oh, and absolutely revise anything. If he does something or says something in the day-to-day -day that you don't like, definitely revise it. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, and welcome. Hello. Movement stopped again. Aww. Is there a way to do on-the-spot detachment as we do on-the-spot revision? Why won't the old man just leave already? Ugh. I know, right? I, I know it can feel incredibly frustrating when we continue to notice those old patterns and those old mannerisms come back up. Um, I mean, the old man will leave. It does leave. You know, it, it cannot remain and it cannot persist. If, if we are persisting in that new state, like that old man will have to leave. That's that's inevitable. That's a given. Um, yes, we can do on the spot detachment. If, if we just remember to do so, sometimes it's easy for us to get kind of caught up in that moment. Like if, if we feel upset about something, if something triggers us or something, you know, is causing us to feel a dissatisfaction, it is easy for us to kind of get wrapped up in that, you know, in that state, it can be difficult for us to remember to do things such as revise or detach in that moment. Um, but you can absolutely apply detachment, that exercise, the same way that you would apply on the spot revision, 100%, 100%, yeah. And I, and I would, I would. I would come back to that first principle anytime that you become aware of the 3D Right. And, and also, you know, we, we got to check ourselves <laughs> if we are continuing to look to the 3D. Right. Yeah. One thing is for certain. When we persist and maintain that new state of consciousness, that new state of being. The 3D has to change. Bar none. Bottom line. Bottom line. Hmm. Keep going. Remember that first principle, use detachment. Yeah. Thank you, Donatella. And hello. Hi, Missy. Is it okay to visualize our wish fulfilled throughout the day, like daydreaming? I'm feeling as it is done and other techniques stress me out. Oh, is it okay to visualize? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. We, we don't have to limit it to only imagining before bed or only, you know, going into that scene before bed, though I, I, I do and always will strongly recommend taking advantages of those windows before bed and even in the morning. Um, but we can absolutely imagine and let ourselves get lost in that world during the day to day, to be clear. Yeah. Yeah. And, and go with whatever way feels less stressful, right? It goes without saying, uh, we want to take the path of least resistance. 100%. Thank you so much, you guys. All right. Trying to make sure. 
Thank you, Tam. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the super chat. I have a hard time persuading myself to believe it's possible to control my reality. Do you have any tips for me? I would love to hear more about success stories to motivate me. Good question. Um, yeah, I, I know that this one can be hard. A lot of the struggle comes down to trust in the law, faith in the law. Um, in fact, I've, I've yet to meet a single person who didn't struggle with this at one point or another on their journey. The maintaining the faith, maintaining the belief, the trust that we do, in fact, affect our reality. I know it's it's a huge, <laughs> huge pill for us to swallow. Um, so yeah, uh, number one, you're definitely not alone in those fears. It's completely understandable. Um, some some tips. Would I, number one, absolutely make sure that you are continuing to build your faith, along with whatever you are aiming to manifest, whatever your desired outcome is, and imagining for that. Make sure that you're also using faith building exercises. Make sure that you are also putting this to the test. All right, we, we want to naturally build our faith because you can read about this all day long. We can learn about this until we're blue in the face, but it's not really until we begin to apply it, observe it, and see it for ourselves that we're truly going to start to have more faith here. If we're just going off of somebody else's word alone, it's still probably going to feel difficult at times, just being brutally honest. I know success stories can be incredibly helpful, incredibly motivating, but again, there's nothing like your own experience with the law. There's nothing like you continuing to prove to yourself that the law is real and that you do, in fact, have an effect on what you experience in the 3D. Um, I've made a few videos talking about faith building exercises and testing the law. You can check those out. Um, I've also made a number of success story videos. If, you know, if right now in this moment, perhaps you just need that boost and that's totally fine and totally understandable. Um, I'm actually, with the next success story video I've got coming out, I'm gonna compile them into a playlist to make it easier to find, easier to access. But yeah, yeah. hope that helps. I hope that makes a bit more sense. If you need me to clarify anything, though, let me know. Thank you, ENZ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Does going to the end uh, steps slow down the middle? Oh, does going to the end, is going to the end greater than going in steps? It does it slow down the middle. I think I'm understanding your question. Um, if I'm misunderstanding anything, let me know. Uh, ideally, we would, I always recommend to people, if, if you are able to, and there's not a lot of resistance to the idea, go to the end. Go to the end. Um, if, if we are, if it feels natural, if it feels good to do so, go to the end. Um, always when possible, go to the end. Now, if it feels like there's a lot of resistance to the idea, if it feels like a lot of confliction, double-mindedness, perhaps it feels like too great of a leap, so to speak, um, to imagine yourself somewhere that feels very far away. Um, I personally don't think there's anything wrong with going in steps. You're going to get mixed opinions about this. Everybody is going to have their own opinion about manifesting in steps or stages. Um, I personally don't see anything wrong with this, especially if it feels more natural and more natural to imagine something that feels more obtainable, if that makes sense. Like imagining if I'm in no contact with a person and I want to marry that person, imagining a wedding or being married may feel 
pretty difficult for me to believe, but imagining reconnecting, right? Imagining communication again, like that feels maybe more tangible or believable. So we can absolutely do that. The only thing I will say about manifesting in steps, and, and this is the most important thing, we have to remember to continue going, right? Um, a lot of times the, the mistake that's made here is we will imagine, say, receiving a text message or our person reaching out to us um, as sort of like the next step. And when that happens, we get sidetracked and turn our attention back to the 3D and we don't remember to keep going, right? Okay, now I've now uh, first recon uh, reconciliation, then now we're dating, you know, now we're courting again, now we're exclusive. Instead of doing that, we get hung up on the 3D again and it, it can wind up derailing from there. So just remember if you're going in steps, turn back to imagination. Don't get, don't get hung up back out here in the 3D. Yeah. Yeah. If you have any, uh, if you have any other questions though, if you, if you need me to clarify anything, let me know. Thank you, CC. Thank you for the generous super chat. I appreciate you. Two questions. I was told I am causing time delay and blocking for my SP to come in. Should I just take charge and ignore this story narrative? And two, how to revise trauma and abuse to stop regression into negative pattern with birth family? Um, should I just refuse to accept being told, no, I am not blocking my SP coming in. Nothing is stopping him no matter what with a counter approach? Good questions. I mean, never accept the narrative that is undesired. Don't accept a narrative if it's not what you want, right? Um, yes, we should be observant of what we are thinking and feeling and the reactions that we're having as that is all feedback for us. Just telling us what state of consciousness, at least in that moment, we may be occupying what beliefs and assumptions we may still have attachment to, right? Um, but it doesn't really mean much outside of that. We don't have to give any kind of meaning to that and saying, oh, I'm sabotaging everything. Like, th this isn't about us going on a guilt trip here. <laughs> that That's certainly not going to help anything, right? Um, always take charge of the narrative because this is your reality <laughs> and ultimately you decide, right? And for number two, how to revise trauma and abuse to stop regression into negative pattern with birth family. So for that, I recommend, it, it really would depend first and foremost, like how you feel with revision, like in general, do you feel like you have a solid grip on revision? Do you feel like you're good at revising? Or is this something that perhaps you haven't really done much or you haven't really used revision that much in the past? Um, does it feel daunting? Things like that. Like how comfortable are you with revision? That's going to better gauge like how I would recommend approaching this. Um, if you feel maybe apprehension or you have not used revision much before, I would practice first and foremost just getting used to doing revision every day, right? If, if it feels difficult to approach like a long-term past event at first, practice revising the last 24 hours. Practice revising the maybe smaller or less significant things, if that makes sense. Things that we don't maybe hold a whole lot of like emotional charge. It, it's probably going to feel in, incredibly daunting to approach those areas that were heavily significant and had a huge impact on us. Especially, and if we have not really used revision much, if we haven't revised a whole lot, then that just adds another layer to it. So I would practice just getting familiar with that technique as a whole in general by revising the last 24 hours. 
and, and, you know, with things that maybe don't hold a whole lot of weight to them. Um, if you feel like you've got a solid handle of revision, if you have revised a lot of things from the past, um, I would go right in with how would you have wanted things to go in childhood? Like I would create new memories from the get go. I would imagine things, memories, experiences that happen that imply something completely different. That instead of trauma and abuse, there was safety and love and compassion and, and all of the things that we would have wanted to have experienced when we were younger instead. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Good question, though. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you, thank you. You guys are so kind. Thank you. I find listening to music while thinking of my SP makes my visualization much stronger and puts me more in the state. I get tingling sensations. Yep. Yeah. Music can be a powerful catalyst. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if you have a, a playlist or a favorite song that reminds you of your person um, in, in loving terms and gets you excited, gets you, in that, gets you in that feeling, then absolutely use that. Utilize that. 100%. Kelly! Hello, hello. Thank you, girl. Good to see you. Hi, Missy. Our talk did wonders. I did my homework and reflected a lot. Good news is faith is restored and I'm not nearly as shook, but you're right. There's still a story I think is very deep down that he's not ready yet and still scared. I still have not yet figured out how to get rid of that old story, even with faith restored and even going within. No wonder there's delays. Ideas? Aww. <laughs> yep, 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 yeah. It's crazy how these conceptions that we have of these people, the, these these stories, so to speak, they can run deep. And and that's the reason that I press so much about self observation. Is a lot of the times we're not even aware, we're not even consciously aware of just how deep this story goes with this person like how it is just so embedded with, with our assumption of them, right? Um, completely normal. So the first thing is becoming aware of it so that we can see perhaps why things have continued to pan out or why things have been manifesting and showing up the way that they have, right? Um, you've not figured out how to get rid of that old story, even with faith restored and even going within. No wonder there's, yeah. Um, this is going to be similar to what I said in the last question. Um, revision. If there is an old story that is stubborn and it does not want to go away and it is hanging on for dear life, we got it. We want to revise it. We absolutely want to revise it. And, and I, again, I know revision is one of those techniques that can leave us with some pause and apprehension sometimes, especially for the bigger events. Um, but yeah. Yeah, e even Neville would stress the importance of revision. And and really, if, if there is any kind of history or story there that is not ideal, we want to remove that. We, we got to remove that. We got to get rid of that story. Um, so similar to what I you know, recommended with the last question, you know, practice with seemingly smaller things. Practice just revising the last 24 hours. Things that there's not a whole lot of weight or attachment to. Things that maybe you don't even really give a shit about, right? Maybe somebody sent you a, a gift, a, you know, a, a a sweater and it was blue and you would have rather had one in green. It doesn't matter. It's just to get into the habit of connecting back with the past, getting familiar with 
going back into the past, so to speak. And how truly our memories are just imaginal acts, that they're nothing we have to fear. There's nothing there that we have to be scared of because they are literally just imaginal acts. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So I, I would I would start there, you know, on, on top of whatever you've been imagining already with the two of you being together, right? Seeing yourself in your home, in the future, continue to do that, but chip away at this idea that he's scared and that he still needs time and all that crap. Get rid of that entirely. There's already a reality. There's already a state right now that exists right now where he's madly in love with you right now. <laughs> Go there. Go there. You got this. <laughs> Oh, thank you again, Tam. Do we need to loop the scene? I mean, we don't have to. So, so when it comes to sets, we're imagining at night, those rules are more like guidelines. They don't need to be like rigid. Uh, everybody may have a bit of a different experience. Um, I find that for me, the scene loops naturally when I go into sets. But we don't want to try to force it. Don't try to force looping your scene. That is a lot of times where people can get stuck. So let yourself just enjoy that scene. Like get sort of lost in the feel of it first. And you're going to notice your mind is going to naturally take you through the scene or maybe even multiple times through that scene, or maybe you'll go into another scene. That's also lovely. That's fine too. I mean, again, this is all about the experience that we're having in imagination, how it feels, and how we, we want that feeling to line up with how we would feel if this were taking place in the physical world, right? So this thing that I'm experiencing in my imagination I want it to feel, and I want myself to be reacting and feeling as if this was happening in the 3D, right? So I guess keep it as natural as you can. You may find your mind naturally looping it. Then if that's the case, then go with it. But we don't have to loop it and we shouldn't push it by force. Thank you, Becca. Hey, Missy, I sent you the email from last week. Thank you for being fabulous. <laughs> I, saw, I did see your email and congratulations to you, by the way. Uh, success stories are fun. Oh my God, they're so much fun. It never gets old. <laughs> uh, seriously, congrats to you. I hope this did a number to boost your faith and boost the encouragement that you are in fact the opera in power. Yeah, you got this Kelly. That's it. <laughs> that is it. Yeah, Becca, I don't know if you wanted to share with the class or if you, I don't, you know, it's up to you if you want to, if you want to share, but I am incredibly thrilled for you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for that super chat. I dream to create my business, but among my ideas, nothing stands out. I'm hardworking. I would succeed only, I don't know what business to launch. Oh, that's completely understandable. And, and I've, I've, worked with a number of people that were kind of in a similar boat. Like they, they knew that they wanted to start their own business. They knew that they wanted to be their own boss. They want to get out of the nine to five grind. Um, completely understandable and admirable. 
if you don't know what exactly that business looks like right now, that's okay. That's okay. I would instead imagine I would, I would construct a scene or imagine the after you've already launched a successful business. So for example, you can imagine a conversation with you and a loved one and hear them congratulate you on all your success, right? How you met every milestone and deadline for your business in the first year. Um, and, and, you know, hear those words and, and say thank you and, and let yourself feel into that in that moment. So I guess there's ways that we can imagine that doesn't strictly imply like what that looks like, like what the business is per se, but you like use what you know you do want. In this case, I know I want to branch out. I know I want to be a business owner. I know I don't want to work a nine to five, you know, I, and use these to construct the scene that implies that you already done that and it's already successful, right? Um, it will come to you. Those ideas, whatever it looks like, will come to you. Just go to the end, see yourself as already being a successful business owner. Yeah. Oh my God, thank you guys. <laughs> Y'all are way too kind. Thank you, Theo. I'm just trying to see if you had a question. Um, not see a, hmm. if you can let me know if you've uh, perhaps left a question earlier in the chat or um, if you haven't yet go ahead and retype that out and I'll go ahead and keep tabs and keep an eye out for that but thank you, Theo. I'll be I'll be keeping eyes on on you. Make sure that I answer if there's a question that you did have. And thank you, Lisa. Sincerely, y'all are amazing today. <laughs> Sincerely, thank you. Block my SP after three years off and on. My scene is for him to come in begging as a loving person. No text or calls, only proposal. Is it possible? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Anything is possible. Literally, because we can imagine anything, right? Anything is possible. One of the areas that I think we get stuck is we're still viewing imagination as if it's fantasy we're still perceiving our inner world as if it's just fiction and it's not real, so to speak. The 3D is real and here it's not. We really want to change this perception. We want to change how we see our imagination. It, Cause it's, it's not fantasy, it's not fiction. Um, it's a preview into a whole new reality a reality that is just as solid and real as this one, right? So if you can imagine it, that's a preview to a reality that you can experience and that exists right now. So absolutely, it is possible. Francesca, thank you so much. Oh my God. <laughs> You're amazing. As well as working on self-concept, can I work on manifesting the desired version of my SP? Is this covered in your video tomorrow? Thanks still. Thank you, Neville's Rink. Oh, <laughs> uh, you... you <laughs> You are too kind. You are too kind. Thank you. Thank you. I respectfully disagree, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, as well as working on self-concept, can I... Um, so, yes, I do talk about this in my video coming out tomorrow, but basically self-concept, there's an idea that 
it is somehow separate from our desire and, and it's not, <laughs> it, 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 it's not um, because our self-concept is essentially just the sum total of the beliefs and assumptions that we have. It, it's basically what, you know, all, all the assumptions, all the ideas, how we perceive ourself, other people, it, it's encompasses all of that. Right. So imagining our person showing up as we desire to see them show up is in and of itself a change to our conception of self. Right. I hope I'm making sense. So if I am right now believing and assuming that my person doesn't like me or doesn't love me or, you know, they don't want to be with me, any of that stuff. If I then imagine, if I am now experiencing in my imagination, the two of us back together, loving my belief about them, right? That's how I am looking at them and that story that I have about them. So that is in and of itself a way to change our self-concept to be clear, to be abundantly clear. Now, if it feels like the of resistance to the idea, if it feels challenging for us to imagine that person in this new light, it, you know, showing up in these ways, that may be indication that there are things that we want to revise, or perhaps it ultimately does boil down to us not feeling good enough, not feeling chosen or prioritized, like that very well could be at the root of all this. Um, but you can absolutely imagine what it is you desire and what you desire to experience. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Thank you, TWSB. Thank you, thank you. And welcome back. I don't think I've seen, maybe, no, maybe you were here last week. I take that back. <laughs> Hi, Missy. Besides building faith, any tips on building imagination so I can enjoy my desires before they manifest in the 3D? Yes. Yes, this is such a good question. Because um, those are the two things, really. That That is the formula for conscious manifestation. It's imagination plus faith, right? But typically speaking, when we are new to this, when we are new to the law, what we may find is that our imagination is, is not very strong, so to speak, perhaps um, because it's very much like a muscle. Like our imagination is like a muscle and the more that we exercise it and use it, and, and continue to expand on it, it will get stronger and stronger. Um, but for a lot of people, before we found out about the law, we were not really using our imagination for anything except for what we don't want, right? Um, so I say that to say that yes, you can absolutely build it, your imagination. You can continue to um, strengthen it and expand on it 100%. 100%. Um, probably the biggest tip that I have for that, uh, aside from visualization exercises, like practice strengthening that, that ability to visualize, to like see things in the mind's eye. Um, but aside from that, practice when you are in a relaxed state. Practice when you are in a drowsy, relaxed sleepy state, you're going to naturally notice a lot less resistance to an idea when you're in that drowsier state. And you're going to have better access to that creative imagination, which is our ability to imagine anything, not just, you know, the same old, same old things that we've, we've been typically imagining, right? It's going to help you to expand and build on that. So visualization exercises and make sure to practice when you are in that sleepier, drowsier state, when you're more deeply relaxed, you should find much less resistance to 
anything that you want to tap into. Yeah. Oh, thank you again, Donatella. I have trouble seeing myself in the scene when I do sats. Is it bad to just be an observer? I mean, it's clearly me in the scene. By the way, you're so <laughs> you're so awesome. No, you. No, you. Um, is it bad to just be an observer? Do you mean it's difficult to see things like in the first person? Is that what you mean? Um, I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, ideally, we do want to practice seeing things from the first person point of view when we imagine. I, I know for a lot of people, it's much easier to imagine in the third person, like seeing ourself as if we were watching ourselves on a movie screen. Um, I would practice in like just getting more familiar with the first person perspective. And, and the reason for that is because you're aiming to imagine, like when you imagine, you want to think of it like you're experiencing it in, in real time, right? Like this is an experience that you are having. You are aware that you are having the experience. If you are looking at yourself having the experience, like you may know that that's supposed to be a character of you, but that's not how it would play out in the 3D, if that makes sense. Like, we're not out here in the 3D experiencing life in the third person, right? So um, it, it does take a little bit of just getting used to if, if it's not something that we've been familiar with before. Um, but that's where using visualization exercises is actually going to really help with that. Like start to like visualize something simple in the in the first person like just imagining you holding an object right and, and you can even you know pick something up look at it scan it close your eyes replicate that from the first person like even those kind of techniques are going to help tremendously by doing so hope that helps Yes, yeah, Sarah. No, that's actually, thank you. That's a really good point. Um, if, if there's something that we enjoy doing every day, like if there's something, if there's a task that you do often with your hands, like Im imagine that, like just close your eyes and try to replicate to the best of your ability. Like, yeah, petting your dog or I mean, typing on the computer or, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. That's actually a really, really helpful point. Francesca, thank you so much. Whilst manifesting an SP, if I am looking at my photos of us, does this aid my manifestation? I mean, it, absolutely it could. How does it feel? If it feels good, if it feels enjoyable, if, if it feels, you know, if it helps to feel more connected to that person, absolutely. Absolutely, go for it. So long as it's not perhaps, I mean, if, if it's, if it makes you feel sad or upset in any way, maybe not so much, but you know, we, we can, we can use the aid of photos if we find it helpful for sure. You guys are amazing. <laughs> All right, let me go back up and see where. One second. Hi, Missy. Tips for manifesting money. Thank you. Good question. And I do have another video coming out. Um, it's been a long time since I've released a video about manifesting money, which I have, by the way. And if you haven't checked out my video that I made, I would definitely recommend doing so. Um, 
but I'm also coming out with one that's, you know, just, just kind of covers maybe a bit more detail. What's been really helpful for me, what really helped me to overcome my scarcity mindset, my, you know, my, my fearful mindset around money. Um, Cause growing up, it was also, it was always a topic of discussion. We never had enough of it. So naturally that, that followed me into adulthood. Um, what helped me was focusing instead of, instead of like seeing myself with a whole bunch of money in my bank account, which I had a very difficult time connecting to that. Like it, it, a lot of resistance came up for me. I, I instead just focused on the feeling that I desire to have because it wasn't even the money itself that I desired. It was the feeling that the money provides, right? Like the feeling of freedom, the feeling of relief, the feeling of security, those types of things. Um, and, and I would recall and, and just really try to capture that feeling as, as much and often as I could. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with a technique called the lullaby method or isn't it wonderful? It, it, I, I used that essentially. I was just focusing on the, the general feeling of, and, and of course the feeling of um, just infinite, right? Like this resource is infinite because we live in a world of abundance. We live in a world that is infinite. Like, just to help myself start seeing things through that lens. Um, the other thing that really helped was revising instances from my childhood, instances where I know that those seeds of scarcity were planted, right? So if, if you are able to recall a time when you started to really notice these, um, that that feeling around money, those beliefs about money, and, and when those were instilled, when those were really became uh, fleshed out for you, I would go back and revise those. Yeah, but check out the video that I made about money. Um, and I am going to be coming out with a video soon, kind of going into more detail. But yeah. Thank you, Francesca. <laughs> Goodness, girl. Thank you. What is the difference between coincidence and births before land? Um, neither of them are real. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, coincidences are not a thing. Coincidences do not exist. There is no such thing as a coincidence at all, at all. Birds Before Land, I mean, it, as far as how it's taught in this community, it, it typically when something shows up, but not fully in the way that you want it to, like a common example is when you're aiming to manifest a specific person and then other people show up saying and doing and acting like you would want your SP to show up. So it's showing up, but not in you know, not from the person that you want to be seeing these things from, right? Um, and, and that naturally happens for a lot of people, believe it or not. Um, it, it is not an uncommon thing to have happen. Um, and, and what I would say, if that is the case, like if you're noticing those out picturings and, and, and that feedback, uh, note what your beliefs and assumptions are about your person specifically. Because it could be that you are embodying more of the state of loved and prioritized and chosen. Um, and you're going to naturally see that reflected. You're going to see that reflected by, by other people and in the 3D around you. But if there's still perhaps something there when it comes to your person, perhaps thinking that, you know, they don't want me anymore, um, I'm never going to be able to manifest them back. You know, they did this, this, and that. If there's still confliction when it comes to your person and the story between the two of you, that's what I would focus on changing. Yeah. 
yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, let me go back really fast. Just want to make sure I didn't miss someone. Theo. Just want to make sure I didn't miss a super chat or a question from somebody who left a super chat, but I think we're good. Thank you, Kryptonian. Thank you, thank you. Can I make robotic affirming work? Right now it doesn't seem to work because I don't really like visualizing or sets. Can I make manifesting easy? How? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I know how frustrating it can feel. I know how frustrating this, this journey can feel at times. Yeah. Um, can robotic affirming work? I mean, we have the case studies, right? We have people that swear by it, um, people that have seen it work in their lives. Um, so I, I'm certainly not going to say that it, it doesn't ever work or that, you know, we should dismiss it entirely. Um, but if, if you're noticing a lot of resistance to what you are affirming, if it's making you feel worse instead of better, I would personally not continue to do so. I, I would not try to keep bulldozing through it and trying to push yourself if it doesn't feel good or if it's making you feel perhaps even worse instead of better. Um, one thing that you can do is try to reframe your affirmations or rewrite them in a way that perhaps does feel more believable, that does feel a bit more like it resonates with you, right? Um, something like that, so that you can begin to maybe identify a bit more with that affirmation. But yeah, yeah. And yeah, affirmations, I, I have seen affirmations work for me, like to be clear, I have had instances of success. I manifested my person back with affirmations the first time. Um, but where I struggled was, I it didn't fully allow me or help me to change my beliefs, change my assumption about myself and my person. So, um, but again, I, I would maybe play around with how you're wording your affirmation, phrasing your affirmation, um, and, and see about wording it in a way that may perhaps feel better and help you to get behind it more, right? Um, can we make manifesting easy? <laughs> I mean, it, it is easy. But to be clear, it's easy from whatever dominant state we occupy. So manifestation is going to be easy and effortless depending on what we dominantly believe and assume, right? So if, if you know, if I have beliefs and assumptions about people and, and my experiences, that's going to manifest like crazy, like whatever that is, I'm going to see that all the time without even trying. It's, it's when our beliefs and assumptions are in contrast with our desire that it doesn't, at times it doesn't always feel so easy. <laughs> and you're, you're not alone on that. You're not alone on that. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I want to note really quick is that SATS does not always require visualizing. Like, SATS does not mean visualizing in the state akin to sleep, just to be clear. SATS is just the, the drowsy state. It's the groggy state, that half asleep, half awake state. Um, you can absolutely try affirmations when you're in, in that state but before bed. You can try to affirm then when you're more relaxed, a bit more sleepy, a bit more drowsy. That is also probably going to find you noticing a lot less resistance 
than trying to like force affirmations in the day to day. If you're feeling anxious, if you are feeling really tight and anxious, that's probably not the best time to try to imagine and, and try to like force a subconscious impression. I do not recommend. I hope all that made sense. <laughs> All right, no, no, Northwest Wind, hello, sir. Good to see you. Unconditional love is amazing. I feel like a goddess. What made you know you were ready to imagine SP again? And finding balance on meditating on love and your husband. Oh, I always love your questions. You have amazing questions. And it is amazing. Unconditional love. I mean, it's it's who we are. That's that's us in our essence. Yeah. What made you know you were ready to imagine SP again? Um I I it wasn't a knowing as I, I just started to notice myself naturally imagining more. I noticed that I was naturally like he he was coming to mind and I didn't react. I wasn't triggered like before. Um, so it, it was kind of a natural process. And, and I just noticed more and more that he would come to my mind, but he would come to mind in a very lovely way, in a very desirable way, right? Without me having to try to, to do so. Um, so that that's kind of how I began to shift my attention you know, back to him and, and including him in my imaginal acts. Um, but it was, it was a very natural process that I do remember. Um, and finding balance and meditating on love and your husband. Like I said, I don't, I don't recall deliberately trying to like trying to find a balance. It, the more that I occupy that state of unconditional love, right? The more and more that I started to feel different about myself, other people and, and feelings and scenarios started to just naturally come up for me. Like before, when my, when my self-concept was terrible and all of these negative assumptions and, and terrible associations, like those came up effortlessly right but that shift happened and i noticed people were coming up in my imagination in a very loving way instead of a very <laughs> spiteful way if that makes sense yeah so yeah when when i realized that i was naturally seeing this person in a different light when i was naturally seeing other people in a different light just kind of went with it right Do you agree that 3D is biblical hell? <laughs> Neville often says this, and it makes complete sense with all the suffering. It seems bliss exists in 4D and love 3D only reflects. Yes. Yeah. The 3D is absolutely like that. That was the, the metaphor. The metaphor for hell is, is the, the landscape we are creating here in the physical world. Heaven and hell exist out here <laughs> they're not some place that we go to when we die it's what we experience while we're here on earth 100 percent 100 percent Hi, Missy. I have multiple people coming back, not the one I want after using your self-concept meditation. Is it now just a matter of persisting till I get movement from the one? Good question. And this actually um, kind of ties into a question that I answered a little bit earlier. Um, and I'm not sure uh, if, you, if you were here for that or maybe you'll be watching this after the fact, but um, 
if we're noticing that other people are showing up in the way that we would want our person to show up, I mean, number one, that is a good indication, right? It's indication that we are getting ourselves more familiar with the state of loved, the state of feeling chosen. What we want to then focus on is how do we perceive our person? How do we see our person? What is the story that we have? Like when somebody asked us, like, tell me about your SP, how would you describe them and the two of you together? How would you describe your relationship? That is what may need to still be changed. And again, I've got a video about this coming out tomorrow about recreating your specific person and some of the things that I did personally to create a whole different, because night and day, my husband changed night and day. When we change and when we change how we see them, they will show up differently. But yeah, keep eyes up for that video. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> how long did it take you to do sats proficiently? Uh, once I was dedicated, or you mean when I like first started trying, because yeah, those are two different answers. Um, when I first started doing sats, I was terrible at them. <laughs> I, I couldn't see shit. I it was it was all black. Um, I couldn't feel anything. I was like getting distracted a lot. I had like intrusive thoughts coming up a lot. It was a mess. It was a mess. I, I even you know made a YouTube short kind of making fun of myself. But that was that was really how it was for me when I first started doing sats. It was just like that. It sucked. Um, so I was very not consistent with it. Um, once I started, to, once I really buckled down and once I really became consistent with it, I would say 10 full of weeks, maybe a couple of months to get good. But that, that was with practicing it every night, every night without fail. So it really depends on, on how disciplined we can, we can be with that. Yeah. And, and, and to be clear, like everybody is going to be different. Some people may catch on way quicker than I did. So just putting that out there too. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. I have observed that faith is crucial for manifesting. I know that the law is fact. I have proven it to myself time and time again, but for some reason, I always fall out of faith for the bigger things like matters of the heart, seeing things in my self-concept that restrict me from getting my desire. Could I simply imagine myself to be totally faithful? Yes. Yes. We can see ourselves as having like somebody who has complete faith in the law. We, we can manifest that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But you, you're a thousand percent. Uh, faith is such an important aspect that often gets overlooked. It's easy to get overlooked. Um, because again, if, if we had 1000% faith, if, if we had conviction that the law was real, no matter what, that I'm not an exception to the law, that the law works for me and everything all the time, it doesn't discriminate, <laughs> it's completely objective, then how could I waver? How could I be double-minded, right? It, it eliminates that double-mindedness. So yeah, faith is important. And absolutely, absolutely see yourself as somebody who has complete conviction in the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good questions, you guys. I'm going back up. Hi, 
Hi, Missy. When revising memory at different trigger points with an SP, do we have to make those memories continuous, like how a TV show evolve? Um, do when revising a memory with different. So, when do we need to revise the the linear timeline? Not necessarily. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, because linear time is not really a thing. It's it's not actually a thing. It's it it's a perception. We perceive it as linear. It appears to be moving through a series of events, right? Um, but that's not what's actually taking place. Yeah, the the reason and the point behind revision is if if we imagine the past differently, if we change a memory, which again is only an imaginal act. Memories are just imaginal acts. That's that's it. We change that we're going to notice a change in ourself. We're going to notice a change in how we feel. We're going to notice a change in what we are assuming and believing, right? And with that comes the change in the 3D to follow. Yes, past and future only exist in imagination. No worlds. Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> Happy Sunday on a Sunday afternoon. I hope you're doing well. Thank you, Mohammed. You as well, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Oh, thank you, Romy. Appreciate that. What to do when they left you for a third party who they are now with? You're heartbroken, but you want them back, but keep repeating angry inner conversations. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, and I know that the, such a shit state to be in. I'm so sorry. Um, What to do when dealing? So um, number one, I, I made a video about dealing with third party scenarios, third party situations. Um, definitely check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. You can find it through just typing in the search bar. Um, but also, yeah, it's it's naturally gonna feel very difficult if, if we noticing those repeated conversations, those inner conversations, that's what we're aiming to ultimately change. Like how we are perceiving them, what we are believing about them, you know, on, on the subconscious level, like we may not even be aware of all of the story and all of the assumption that we have about this person. Um, so if you're not already, I would get very familiar with revision because we, we want to change those conversations. We want to, in, instead of imagining that the past went this way and all of the, the terrible interactions that were had, we want to begin to imagine from a completely different reality, from a completely different state of consciousness. And, that, and that's really the point of revision. It's, it's to change and shape how we perceive things from the past or see things from the past or change the past, to be, to be frank about it. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how familiar you, you are with revision. I made a few videos about that one, that subject as well. It's one that I never shut up about, <laughs> uh, but if you haven't seen those videos, I would definitely recommend. I've made a couple of them, so I, I would definitely take note of that, um, because we really, really, really want to begin to shift in how we are seeing them, what we are believing about them, like that needs to shift.
we're only going to see the 3D reflect something different when we are imagining and assuming something different, right? Thank you, Sarah. We need to chat some time about near-death experiences. They echo so much about what the law of assumption teaches. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for those for those accounts, um, people who have near-death experiences um, echoes a lot of what is taught in the law of assumption. That is also another topic for a video, but yes, let's definitely chat more. Thank you, Kryptonian. Should I force myself to visualize in sats every day because I'm reluctant to do it and find it a chore? I need to do it for an hour and share with official induction. Otherwise, I feel it is too wishy-washy. Um, number one, I wouldn't try to force yourself to do anything. <laughs> I, ideally, this should be done with, with least effort, least effort. I, I know there may be some degree of like direction and of our attention, right? Um, but least effort. If it feels forced, if it feels like a chore, we are putting in way too much effort. Conscious, like willpower, basically. Um, so I, I would not recommend taking that approach. Uh, the, the thing about sats, like, yes, it takes some practice, like f finessing or getting familiar with that state, but every single one of us is always falling through that state every single night. Like everybody, if, if, if you go to sleep at night, you are at some point dropping through sats naturally. Um, so it's, it's really, if, if anything, it's, it's a practice of, like finding that place, that that stage between wakefulness and sleep. Because there, it really does feel effortless. It feels completely effortless. And they've, they've actually done some studies on that hypnagogic state. Um, what very little research we have, what it does show is that when we are in that state akin to sleep, we are number one, less interactive with the 3D, so we're better able to shut out the 3D and all of the limitations and all of our fears and beliefs that come with it, we're better able to shut that out and we're better able to interact with our imagination. So whatever's going on in the imagination world, like we are going to be better able to interact with that without noticing a lot of the resistance that comes with it. So, yeah, it, it is a little bit of practice, but I mean, it's, it's nothing like, if, if it feels forced, that's, that's, pro that's not going to be ideal. Um, a great time to practice is like in, in the afternoon or evening after you've had a big meal and you're naturally already kind of sleepy. Maybe you're, you know, laying on the couch watching TV and you're naturally feeling, feeling a bit tired. Perfect time. Perfect time to practice going into sets. Yeah. And like I said, you, you do not have to visualize per se. Like it can be affirmations. It can be inner conversations. SATS is just an acronym for the drowsy state, the state akin to sleep. That's it. You know, what we do in that drowsy state can be literally anything. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. I was doing almost all right, not looking for her in the 3D, not even using my WhatsApp. Now I was at Instagram and her account appears to me as a suggestion in a very bad way. Any tips? Thank you. Uh -huh. Now, so you were on Instagram and, and something showed up with your person, left a bad suggestion. I mean, number one, I would revise. I, I would 
absolutely revise it. I mean, if, if you if you naturally react to something in the 3D that's unwanted, that's that's fine. I mean, that's human, right? Like we're humans, we're gonna have reactions. Sometimes we can't help it because they are literally subconscious. Um, so so it's not trying to, you know, suppress it or or, you know, beat yourself up if you have a reaction. Like that's that's okay. To, like to be clear, revision is not trying to like suppress our reactions. Just to be clear, um, but when you have the moment when you have a moment to do so when when you can get yourself into maybe more of a relaxed state first imagine that whatever it was that you saw it was more desirable right imagine seeing instead that you know a, a, a good indication what you would have wanted to see something that implies already having what you want if that makes sense see her account appearing in a way that suggests a good thing, a desired thing. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> um, but make sure if, if you're trying to revise, don't do it from an anxious state. If, if you're feeling really anxious, that's not usually the best time to try to go within. It's going to feel really strained. It's going to feel really forced. First, getting yourself as relaxed as you can, you know, whether that's through breathing exercises you know, something that may help to alleviate some of that stress, alleviate some of that anxiousness, you know, do that first. And then when you are feeling a bit better, then go in and revise. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, Aaron. Yeah. I saw the third party's account on an I saw the third party's account on an account that I'm connected to with my SP. It triggered me bad. I revised it and felt so much better. It made me stop checking third party's Facebook and not even think of her. Yup. Yup. That's what's up. Good. Exactly. Do you ever meditate? I feel like it has been hugely helpful for getting into the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I meditate every single day, every day. It's become a habit at this point. It's not even something that I have to like consciously force myself to do anymore. When I first started, it was absolutely a struggle. Um, and that, that's why I, I try to encourage people like if it feels challenging at first like I, I it will not continue to be so it's just getting into a new pattern even if even five minutes of meditation a day is better than nothing yeah because it is greatly beneficial for what we are aiming to achieve here it goes hand in hand with the law and even neville spoke about this in a radio lecture just solely on meditate on meditation. It really, 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 no matter what you're trying to manifest, introduce meditation into your day to day practice if you haven't done so already. <laughs> I promise. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you, happy mind affirmations. Hi, Missy, how to get rid of repetitive negative thoughts. They seem less since working more on self-concept, but when I have a weak moment, they immediately pop up and take me out of the wish fulfilled. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know stupid thoughts are really annoying. Um, definitely check out the video that I've made about how to deal with negative thoughts, like how we should go about approaching them and, and navigating them. Um, like you said, that they will come up less and less the more that we change. Like the more that we change ourself, our self-concept specifically, we're going to notice less and less of those 
negative thoughts, or we're going to notice less reaction to them. If we do have an intrusive thought, we're not going to have the same kind of reaction to them from that new state of consciousness, right? Um, so that's that's number one. Absolutely continue to focus on imagining yourself as the version of you that you desire to be and experience. Like, bar none. That That is what ultimately gets rid of it. Um, but when those moments do happen, the best thing that we can do, and this sounds very counterproductive, it, it sounds counterintuitive, I know, don't fight them. Don't try to push back against them. Don't try to flip them or, you know, I, I know, again, people have varying opinions about thoughts and negative thoughts and what to do. But from my own experience, personally, the more that I would engage with those negative thoughts, even if it was just trying to like affirm the opposite or trying to convince myself like, no, 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 I'm great. I'm doing fine now. Like I'm totally different. Those thoughts would still keep coming back and I was still getting affected by them. Right. Um, we can observe them. We can be aware of them, but we don't have to like, give our energy and attention to them, right? That That's sort of just breathing life into them. It's, it, it's really like what we put our focus and attention on is what we're going to give more power to, if that makes sense. Um, so like in those moments when they happen, like, yes, I know it's frustrating when they come up and we're reacting and next minute we're spiraling. I, I get the frustration there. And I know we want to try to combat that and we want to try to fight that but fighting it it's it, nine times out of ten 99 times out of 100 it's, it's just going to make it worse yeah instead observe them let them let them go in and out thoughts are like clouds and they're about as powerful as clouds like they, they're they, they float in they float out like it's they're clouds Right, we don't need to fear them. There's nothing to fear because thoughts is not thoughts do not hold the power here. I think in part we get so fearful of our thoughts because one of the things that is often taught is that your thoughts create your thoughts create your reality. Your thoughts create. And that's not like inherently true. It's not inherently true. It's not the thoughts that create. The only creative force that exists in this entire universe is I am is awareness, right? So you're not your thoughts. <laughs> your thoughts hold no power. And even if we react to them, even if we find ourselves struggling, that doesn't inherently mean anything, right? Watch the video that I made about how to deal with negative thoughts, dealing with intrusive thoughts. I, th I think that one's really going to help you. Thank you, Cretonian. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm trying to see if you... Sorry, I'm just trying to see... I'll keep an eye out for if you had a question. I cannot find if you did. I apologize. Yeah, if you, if you don't mind maybe retyping out your question, I'll keep eyes out. I'm sorry. Um, I don't have a spot. Hi, Missy, do we need to get to a feeling of not caring for our desire in order to manifest it? And if so, what's the best way to get to that feeling of not really caring? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a feeling of not caring. No, I I mean, because of course we still care, right? 
that part doesn't ever really go away. It's, it's more a feeling of we're no longer like desiring from a place of like longing and the absence of our desire, right? That That's sort of the detachment aspect to this. Like we're not detaching from the desire. It's not that we stop wanting what we want. It's It's we're detaching from the double-mindedness and, and the fears and the doubts and all of the, the reasons why we can't have what we desire. Like that is the part that goes away. Right. So, so all of the terrible things and reasons and the logic of why we can't have it, all, all of that goes away. Yeah. I wouldn't really say it's a, it's a feeling of like not caring. Um, and how do we reach that place that will come naturally once you know, once you've imagined something and it's been accepted, it's been like this, this desire, this idea or suggestion is accepted, we'll notice a change in how we feel, right? So th that's something that naturally happens when we, for example, reach the Sabbath. We reach the place where this, this you know, this reality that we've selected, right? It's, it's sort of fixed now and, it, and it's done. As far as the 4D is concerned, we've already selected and, and we've already taken on the role of this desired outcome. And so there's nothing left to do as far as like trying to manifest or continuing to do techniques or, or anything like that, continuing to imagine for our desire. Um, so we naturally reach a place where we're no longer like desiring and longing because we have it, right? We've already experienced it. And we've selected that state, we've selected that reality and we're free to move on to something else. I hope that makes sense. I, I have a feeling I got to make a video talking more about this. This this is a topic that I know can get really confusing. Um, but yeah, when you when you reach the Sabbath, you're you're naturally not going to be fixed on like where is it? Well, I don't have it. I can't have it. All of that's going to go away. All right. Got time for maybe one or two more. Hi, Missy. No contact with my person in one and a half years. Can't really remember his face or his voice clearly. I do have pictures, but I can't see his face moving in a scene. How can I do an imaginal act? Thanks. Good question. So you don't have to visualize your person per se. There's many different ways that we can imagine. There's many different ways that we can imagine a scene that implies that we now have what we desire, right? Um, for example, you can imagine talking to a close friend or a family member about how you and your person reconnected and how you two are together or doing very well, you know, whatever that might be. So it doesn't even need to be like a visual reference. It, it can be literally just like an internal conversation like we have in our mind. Um, you know, or if you are a visual person, imagine, you know, having coffee with friends and, and updating them on life and about your person and how you two are connected again and, and so on and so forth. So it, it, our scene doesn't necessarily have to have our person in it to imply that you are now with that person, if that makes sense. I had a client that just by imagining her, her imaginal act was her going to like at, at her hair salon that she would go to <laughs> and she just looked down and saw a wedding ring on her hand. Like she sat down in the chair and she had the thing pulled over her and, and she saw before um, the thing went over, like she looked down and she saw a wedding ring on her hand and that was it. Like no involvement with that specific person, no, but it implied that she was now married. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. And they did, in fact, just get engaged not too long ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> John, tip for guys manifesting and desiring a better self-concept. Imagine that you are James Bond, Daniel Craig, <laughs> with infinite swagger, calmness of mind, and complete self-control. It's so good. I love that. I love that. I love that. And 1,000% agree. <laughs> Missy, how did you detach from your SP in order to manifest? Good question. So, and, and just to be clear, I, I didn't ever detach from him, like moving on, or I don't want this person anymore, clearly. It, it, it wasn't like that. It was detachment from the old concept of self, like my old beliefs, my old thoughts. Well, the thoughts stem from the beliefs, the old patterns the old conception of myself, like how I saw myself in relation to other people, how I saw other people, how I saw my person, like all these preconceived notions that I had, that is what I changed. That's what I changed. And that's what I'm going to be diving more into uh, with the video that's coming out tomorrow is, is diving into that aspect of like the recreation of your person because with that is also, of course, the, the recreation of self. Yeah. Yeah, so keep eyes up for that video. That that one will be helpful, I'm sure. Oh, and on that note, you guys, unfortunately, I do need to get going. <laughs> busy, busy day ahead. Lots and lots of emails and errands to run. But thank you all so much for being here. Sincerely, awesome questions today. Awesome energy. I love seeing this this chat going and you and all of you interacting with each other. It makes me so happy. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend. Take care of yourself. Much love to each and every one of you. And I hope to see you back with me next time. Do take care. <laughs> Much love and bye, guys. <laughs>